Hello, I'm Xiang Chun. Welcome to my channel. Today, let's talk about a story of wine, China modern, and colonial era. How wine shoots China modern shaped by colonial era. During the late 19th to early 20th century, multiple foreign powers established their concessions across China. Then, Western trade, technology, and modern ideas flooded into China. In that era, China was still an agricultural society and hadn't experienced an industrial and social revolution like the West. Consequently, the modern Western elements were directly grafted onto China, resulting in a unique modern style. So, I use the lens of wine, showing three aspects of China modern in colonial era. Number one, a cultural laboratory. Number two, a shared sense. Number three, a third form of nationalism. Now, let's begin with number one. China modern resembled a cultural laboratory, blended colonial culture and Chinese culture. Classical sociologist Max Weber once pointed out, modern Western society is a highly rationalized society. Through following rationalized rules and procedures, aimed at achieving those goals as efficiently as possible. However, during colonial era China, the term modern translated as modern vividly portrayed a state of cultural flux and fusion, rather than emphasizing a rational future. The Chinese modern is intricately woven with a diverse and rich tapestry of elements within the complex social context of that time, entwining Western colonial culture, modern commercial culture, and traditional Chinese culture. Here, the scholar points out, we must come to terms with the subject, that is neither the radically different other of Western subject, nor a simple replica of the Western consciousness. Here, a poster vividly exemplifies why modern can be seen as a cultural laboratory. It showcases a fashionable Chinese woman, don't wear the exquisite makeup, earrings, and stylish curves, elegantly dressed in a modernized qi pao and western high heels. She gracefully holds a brandy glass of European origin and enjoys a Coca-Cola, an American creation. In close detail, the woman holds the brandy glass in a typical manner, gently warming the cola by grinding the glass in her palm. This image conveys a fusion of modernity, seamlessly blending stylish and traditional elements from both China and the West, a pursuit embraced by Chinese urbanities. Another example is a translation of white Greek names. Several writers and poets undertook the task, integrating Chinese spirits and artistic essence into the European Greek names. For instance, Carbonate Sovin was beautifully translated as Chi Xia Zhu. Here, Chi symbolizes the color red, Xia alludes to rosy clouds, and Zhu signifies purse. Together, these characters evoke a pearl that mirrors the radiance of rosy clouds, capturing not just the grape's deep red hue, but also its intense flavor. Chardonnay was translated as Xia Duoli, symbolizing the ever-changing beauty of a colorful sunset glow. These names, on to male transliterations, they also reflect the nuance and flavor influenced by the local terroir. These European grape varieties, with their elegant Chinese names, have been cherished and passed on until today. Number two, China modern is a shared sense of Western ideas. During the early 2000s, 
that the Western ideas spread to China, including Marxism, which catalyzed the Chinese New Cultural Movement, promoting the ideas of science and democracy. In addition, French Romanticism advocated freedom, individuality, reform, and passion was taught in universities. 同学们好，今天我们讲的是十九世纪法国文学。关于十九世纪的法国文学，我们可以用“星光璀璨”来形容。而维克多·雨果呢，就像是被繁星环绕的圆月一般。At times, the Western world was astonished by the depth of familiarity that intellectuals in China displayed with the Western culture. Continuity and discontinuity records. Marx said sarcastically that Western armies, readying themselves to invade China during the Opium War, would find fixed the great world words: liberty, equality, fraternity. Yet, these Western modern ideas directly entered China's agricultural society, lacking the broad modern foundations of industrialism and capitalism. Hence, handing on modernity as an existential category, a state of mind, and a new self-awareness. A limited number of modern enterprises serve to foster the collective sense. In 1892, Zhang Bishi, the novice Chinese entrepreneur, built China's first modern winery, Zhang Yu, in Shandong Province. Through their modern production and internationally acclaimed products, these enterprises embodied the modern ideas such as novelty, openness, and progress. Furthermore, these ideas spread through consumption culture. Concerning wine consumption, although ordinary people only occasionally bought or drank it, it still served as a specific cultural product, allowing people to engage with the modern experience through exposure to wine advertising posters and magazines. For example, in the Saturday magazine, the wine advertisement portrays two elegantly dressed and beautiful women savoring wine. A new cultural product of that era. A wine advertisement specifically designed for travelers preparing for the journey. The man says, "With the fine wine in hand, there is no need for feel loneliness on the journey. It's a great idea." Also, wine is depicted in the magazine literature. The grandma held a goblet glass, sipping the amber-like red wine with relish. Why represented China modern, consumed or perceived to understand it, in which indigenous and foreign cultures and values had already meshed together. Three, China modern represents a form of nationalism marked by a paradox. It both embraces Western modernity and exhibits hostility towards it. These Chinese private modern enterprises, like Zhang Yu Winery, were called national industry. Established with foreign industry incentives, they showed a paradoxical future. On the one hand, they imitated Western business models and technologies, while acknowledged subordinate status of their products compared to their foreign counterparts. For example, an advertisement about wines for gift giving shows: in upper class society, it has become customary to give imported wines as gifts. However, in recent years, the prices of these foreign wines have surged. Zhang Yu's fine wine provides a suitable alternative, offering the same distinguished quality as foreign wines, but at a much more affordable price. 
Furthermore, they take great pride in the awards their products have obtained in the Western world. At the 1950 Panama Pacific International Exposition held in San Francisco, drawing its four wines received four gold medals. This event has frequently appeared in their promotional advertising from the past to the present day. However, on the other hand, the national industry shows the nationalism in resisting Western colonialism. These Chinese indigenous industrial forces, aligned with the new cultural movement, ignited a spiral of hope that China could move towards an industrial reality. Then, yet the scale of the national industry was small. And distanced away from the necessary foundation for modernization. Consequently, during the colonial era, China modern remained more of a global utopian vision, entangled in a paradox between a global modern outlook and anxiety about China's plight. Okay, that's the entire story I want to share today. Now let's make a brief conclusion. When tasting wine in China over 100 years ago, we saved a specific cosmopolitan modern image. In this context, wine acted as a cultural laboratory, openly embracing Western modern ideas without fearing colonization. It experimented with new ideas and items. Modern became self-conscious, constantly motivating individuals to pursue a vision of progress, desire, and novelty. Furthermore, modern Chinese wineries served as a means for people to express sentiments of nationalism. Their products, highlighting their ability to compete with Western wines, also showcased the potential for China's future modern. As time unfolds, how did wine continually show the path of China's modern? How did China build its modern foundations and rise? I will continually talk about that. But before that, because of Christmas coming, I will create one video to talk about wine at Christmas. Looking forward to meeting you then. If you like my program, please don't forget to share your thoughts and subscribe my channel. Have a good day and bye.